Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni on the Gadget 360 show and we've got a packed show for you with some really cool stuff. We'll kick things off with the Acer Nitro 5. Budget gaming laptop, powerful specifications, impressive combination of 12th gen Intel processor and a fantastic GPU. Then we'll move on to Punjab Kings. Yes, IPL about to wrap up but this is an interview with Anil Kumble, John T. Rhodes and Shankar Raj Gopal about all the tech they use for this much needed edge to Punjab Kings in their performance. Then we'll move on to a TV from Sony, the Sony Bravia X75K TV. 4K HDR TV with amazing colors, great inbuilt audio speakers, comes with Google TV on board and prices actually very aggressive for Sony. Starts at less than 60,000 rupees. Let's get started with today's show. Logitech earlier this week took the curtains off the MX Master 3S mouse and MX mechanical keyboards. The Master 3S has minor upgrades over its predecessor. It comes with silent buttons and a sensor which is even more sensitive than before. As for the keyboards, there are two, the MX Mechanical and the MX Mechanical Mini. Both keyboards are a step away from the MX keys, adding low-profile mechanical keys to the mix. The Master 3S will be sold for $99 and the MX Mechanical and Mechanical Mini will be priced at $170 and $150. The price and release for India are so far unknown. Meta is rolling out notifications to people for an update in their privacy policy. As Meta has clarified, this update is nothing significant. It has just been done to add more clarity about Meta's data practices by including more examples and details explaining how the data is used to offer more transparency to every user. This update still will not give any rights to Meta over any user data. Meta also said that special treatment will be given to users in India. They will get the opportunity to give consent or continue using Meta's services on the previous privacy policy. And keeping readability in mind, they are also translating the new policy into 11 Indian languages, which is an industry first. We will do a detailed story on this update next week. And our top story today is a laptop from Acer, the Acer Nitro 5. Comes in an all black color, well designed lid, really really good looking, RGB costs are saved around the chassis, only visible around the keyboard which is great to actually type on trackpad, decent size, smooth operation, plenty of well located ports, 15.6 inch display with a 144Hz refresh rate, perfectly suitable for gaming, 12th gen Intel processor, great GPU, really really good stuff, performance is amazing for average tasks and great for gaming as well. Price point $84,999. While top-of-the-line gaming laptops have been getting better, bigger and pricier, it leaves out space for the cheaper laptops to get better at the same time. And hence, we are looking at one of the more budget-friendly gaming laptops out there, the Acer Nitro 5. And in the next few minutes, we will find if this is worth the limited money you want to spend on your gaming needs. To kick things off, we always start with what we can see first. The Nitro 5 comes in an all black design with some great patterns edged onto the lid underneath the indented Acer logo. Even with that, the laptop follows a mostly subtle and all black aesthetic. It looks good and keeps the bottom line low for all the RGB related costs saved. The limited amount of RGB has been put all under the keyboard, which looks amazing. Apart from the luminance, the typing experience has been great and the number pad will be welcomed by many. The trackpad is also decently sized and responds fast to swipes and clicks. Most of the sides are covered in either vents or ports. The port selection consists of a USB-A Gen 1 port, a USB-A Gen 2 port, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 port, a Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port, an HDMI port, an RJ45 Ethernet port, and an audio jack. Apart from the RGB lit keyboard, what will hold your attention the most is the 15.6 inch display. It is a 1080p panel, which is expected at this price. It is smooth with a 144Hz refresh rate. The colors look good and can make the experience as immersive as a 15.6 inch display possibly can. It gets plenty bright for comfortable indoor use. So watching content or playing games, both are pulled off well on the LED backlit TFT panel. The top firing speakers though are pretty average and barely serve their purpose. 
Now for all the power under the hood as showcased on that display, it comes with the 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700H CPU, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti GPU, 16 GB RAM, 512 GB PCIe Gen 4 SSD along with a 1 TB HDD. These are the specs of the variant at the top of the order that we received for review. The day-to-day -day performance is an absolute breeze. For the Power Hungry Task 2, the 12th Gen 12700H helps a lot. As for gaming, the laptop outputs some great numbers for the GPU capped at 95 watts. Most of the games we played average around 60 FPS at high settings and close to 100 FPS at medium settings. While not the beastly performance one might want, the 3050 Ti still performs well. As for the heat, the laptop remains cool even under the heaviest of load. But as is the cold and hard truth of every gaming laptop, the battery life is never good. Even so, the Nitro 5 gets worse. It lasts for only 3 hours with average tasks, all of the result of the very taxing hardware being carried by a small 51 watt hour cell. Apart from the disappointing battery life which is expected, the Nitro 5 impresses everywhere else. Especially when the variant we tested out comes in at a price of just 1,9999. This is the price for the laptop that performs well for the internals, with a solid build and an amazing display. Hence, for the limited bucks you want to spend on gaming, the i7 variant of the Acer Nitro 5 will be well worth it. IPL almost wrapped up, which is why I think the story really, really makes a lot of sense. What's the kind of technology an IPL team actually uses to get an edge? We'll talk to Anil Kumble, John T. Rhodes and Shankar Raj Gopal. We'll get to know about all the tech used by Punjab Kings coaching team to improve the team performance on the pitch through this entire talk. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. This is a very exciting time for us as we're going to speak about what everybody is, of course, absolutely and totally deeply into IPL, cricket, sports, but we are merging that with what we love out here, and that is technology. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to start off with you, uh, Anil. Uh, we've heard a lot about the fact that, uh, you know, your team uh, is a team that absolutely and totally is all about using technology and a lot of technology, right? So Punjab Kings is using a lot of devices, analytics, statistics, uh, video, putting it all together, and an app that you use. Can you take us through a little bit about entirely what this entire thing is all about, the kind of technology you use, why you opted for so much of technology, and how does it help? Examples would be great. Uh, yes, you know, like you know, you know, IPL is all about having that edge, and, uh, and technology is something that uh, we as a group, as a team, have embraced, uh, be it at practice, be it at uh, meetings, be it at going through data of not just our players, but also about the opposition. Uh, those are things that uh, we, we go through. Uh, you know, Apple uh, iPads are perfect for, uh, you know, it's not just the uh, usability, but also uh, the comfort and, and, uh, and, and the ease at which you can just carry it around and, and do your uh, notes. Uh, you know, I use a, I, I like writing and uh, it's, it's wonderful to have uh, an iPad, which, which wherein you can put in all your notes in and, and uh, put together a strategy, whether it is field placing uh, for a certain particular player going through, uh, uh, you know, putting those 11 players on the field and, and, and those kind of things is wonderful. The app that we have, uh, we have a dedicated app uh, which I'm sure Shankar will be able to uh, uh, take you through. Uh, it's it's about uh, a video analysis of players on the device. It's wonderful to have that technology and 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 then share it uh, with ease. You know that's the advantage of uh, having uh, uh, this and and using the technology as well. So so that's how we sort of okay. look to do at practice, at training, and also in uh, in our meetings. Okay, fantastic. Sounds like uh, you're using a whole lot of technology out there, Jonty. Uh, interesting because you know you've been you know you you've been a star in everything that you've done, but you know that iconic picture of yours when you actually had that run out where you were literally uh, parallel to the ground is something that is you know ingrained in everybody's head. But now that you have so much of technology and you can literally uh, dice it and slice it down to the ultimate T. How have you used it? What do you do? What did you bring in? And what really excites you about all of these, the amalgamation of all this technology, the 360 degree that you use? Rajiv, yes, thank you, man. As you can see, these days being 52 years old, I do have to wear my glasses when I'm writing down and taking notes. And 
and that's been the one thing is you know in, in all the all the IPLs that I've, I've been involved in before, I like to sort of capture every single ball that is that we is, is bowled during the game. And now with the humidity and the heat and having to put glasses on, um, it's taken away the, the requirements for paper from from my perspective. And and as Anil said earlier, you can with the various apps use the pen. I'm on the iPad, and I can sort of capture data if I have to. We can't use uh, any technology or iPads during the game, but afterwards I revert back to the app, and I can go straight through ball by ball what the game was. So all the notes that I'm making for reference with regards to a debrief with the batting guys or the, or the fielding guys, I have that as if I've taken down the notes, which I used to do. Okay, fantastic. Shankar, let's get down to, uh, you know, a, a little bit about all the tech and Again, the question is, why did you actually opt to use so much of tech? And then we we'll maybe get into the app a little. You know, what are the analytics? Why did you feel the need for? There are a lot of apps that would be available that would be able to do some of what you're doing, but you opted to have something which is customized, which has been made specially for you. So take us through five, first, why the technology? Second, why an app that you had to actually get made? And how has it helped? What, what is the quantitative and quality differences you've seen because of all the technology you've used. Yeah, th thanks Rajiv uh, for having us. Um, the the challenge uh, during a season, uh, Rajiv, is that uh, there are coaches, there are players, there are analysts uh, like, like me, and all of us have very different requirements. So how do you marry uh, the requirements of all of them and put it in one place where they can sort of check it at their own time. That's the, I mean, it's a, it's uh, when you're in a bubble, uh, you try to not to have too many meetings, etc., and give players a time to check what they want, when they want. You know, that's that's the main thing. As as, as you can see, Jonty's yeah. Jonty celebrating. Yes, the the le the fewer meetings guy. Yeah, Jonty's one of them who adv advocates for that. So uh, to, just to marry all the all the requirements of everyone. And put it in one place was was the was why we had the app and we decided to have the app. All right. So, so Anil, you're also known as the app man. You're also the person that you know gets technology. You've done this before. How much did you contribute to all the features of that app? And uh, was this was this was this a collaboration? Is this pretty much your effort? Uh, an app isn't really the easiest thing to get made unless it's the right people giving in the right input. So, how much of it was yours? No, obviously, you know, Shankar and I, uh, we've been uh, discussing about what we need as a team, uh, what are the things that we want to see, uh, especially in terms of putting a strategy in place. Like I said, yeah, you know, uh, although we are looking at a strategic meeting as a group, we want that meeting to be very fulfilling and 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 crisp as well. Uh, and, and that's something that is a massive challenge with uh, uh, with putting in together as to what message you want to give in, you know, for example, if you're looking at putting a strategy in place for a particular batter against a particular bowler of one of our bowlers, then it's very important uh, to uh, to sort of re-emphasize uh, that particular bowler, what he has done before to that particular batter, especially in the first five or ten balls that he has bowled to him, because that's mm -hmm. where the vulnerability of a batter is. Uh, if you can get a batter out, T uh, Twenty, I know, is is a game of uh, uh, economy. How can you keep the runs down? But it's also, you know, the best way to keep runs down is to take wickets, and and that's something that we keep discussing in 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 meetings. How can you do that? So so that's something that uh, you know we constantly have a discussion around. Inputs come from everyone, you know, from all the coaches uh, uh, and uh, from all of us, even the players. Players also give, give their feedback, and all of that is taken into account and. Uh, and attributed to uh, the changes that we make. Absolutely fantastic. So thank you, uh, gentlemen. It was great speaking with you and uh, enjoy the rest of the IPL. And I'm sure there's a lot more that we'll be talking to you and speaking to you about uh, all through, including the World Cup. So thank you for joining us. Let's take a quick break right now on the Gadget 360 show. When we come back, lots more.
Let's move on now to our next story. This is the TV from Sony, the Sony Bravia X75K. You know, I'm very surprised, very competitively priced TV from Sony, meant to compete in the most ferocious price segment in the TV market. Now, design very similar to what we see in other TVs, but we tested this out. This is the 55 inch 4K TV that we have. Extremely sharp, very colorful, very, very vivid. The picture quality absolutely and totally blew our mind. Very realistic content, excellent at upscaling, you know, full HD content to 2K and 4K. Excellent Google TV platform on board, very good audio performance also. Really built well this TV and prices start at 55,990 for the 43 inch variant. The world of televisions in a country like India has been extremely competitive in the past few years. With every company laser focused on providing the maximum number of features at the least possible price. So what does a legacy brand like Sony play on to compete in the ultra-competitive price war of TVs? Let us answer that with our review of the Sony Bravia x 75 k 4K TV, a TV price right in the middle of the most competitive price segment. And with that, it also looks the part. The design is largely similar to what every other TV looks like. An almost bezel-less design with two V-shaped stands to hold the TV up. The back too is largely plain and simple. But where it is different is what lies in the middle of the bezels and everything that powers it. The 55 inch panel we tested out is an amazing 4K one. It is extremely sharp and colourful. The colours are easy on the eyes, maintaining the correct balance between vibrance and realism. However, the TV only supports the HDR10 and not Dolby Vision, which some of the other TVs can offer in this price range. But based on the image quality, colours and sharpness, the lack of Dolby Vision can be forgiven. After all, what is the point of Dolby Vision if the colours are not right? What the TV also shines with is upscale. The TV uses Sony's X Reality Pro technology which can upscale 2K or 1080p footage to almost 4K. And in our testing, the upscaled footage looked very well optimized to fit into the resolution of the panel. And the smartness also extends to how everything operates inside the TV. The X75K has Google TV on board. Google TV is hands down one of the smartest platforms available on a TV. It acts as a hub for all content for all different streaming apps. So content from Hotstar, Prime Video or any other app shows up all on one screen. Google TV also smartly analyzes users' content choices to curate a list of content that they would want to watch. Plus, with the capable internals, surfing throughout the UI remains extremely smooth and easy. And with support for Google Chromecast and Apple AirPlay 2, one can easily cast content to the TV no matter what kind of phone they use, whether it is an iPhone or an Android phone. Now, AV can't be completed without audio, and that is also a part where the TV has some built-in smarts. The X75K has strong bass reflex speakers and 20 watt tweeters. The sound that comes out through them goes through a computer model that cancels out all the peaks and the dips in the audio, which results in a very natural, clean and well-defined audio response. It is impressive for speakers built into the TV. They will never be able to replace the dimensions added through a soundbar, but still, the user can make do without a soundbar if they want to save their precious bucks. Now with no Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos or a refresh rate higher than 60Hz, one can easily dismiss the X75K. But then, ignoring the great picture quality, audio processing and the smartness of Google TV is not possible. And that is just how it sets itself apart in the price war. The Bravia X75K shines with its great colors and audio performance that is too good for built-in speakers which the other TVs can't match. The X75K starts at 55,990 for the 43-inch variant and goes up to 65 inches priced at 1,99,990. If great colors, Google TV and good audio are something you prioritize, this is the one to go for. That then is the Gadget360 show for this week. We've got lots coming up next week.